In the previous video, we described the PMBM conjugate prior for extended object tracking. In this video, we give a high-level description of how the PMBM conjugate prior can be used to obtain a recursive algorithm. Since many of the details are omitted, it also serves as a generic description of several other extended object tracking algorithms. The way we previously described the global hypothesis in a PMBM filter for extended objects is useful for understanding how many hypotheses we have. However, in our recursive filters, we normally have local tracks, here represented by a potential object and its local hypotheses, that we propagate over time. As an example, suppose we have one measurement at time 1, zero measurements at time 2, and two measurements at time 3. In that case, there are four potential objects in total, even though they cannot all coexist, and the total set of local hypotheses is illustrated in the figure. Compared to the PMBMs for point objects, we now have two new local hypotheses where both measurements at time 3 are from the same object. There are five global hypotheses, and they can all be expressed as combinations of these local hypotheses. One global hypothesis is the combination of the local hypotheses marked in green, which can also be expressed as 1, 1, 1, 0 by indexing local hypotheses from left to right. The other global hypotheses are as illustrated in these figures. It may be a good exercise to verify that these five hypotheses also correspond to all possible ways to partition the complete set of measurements Z11, Z31, and Z32. Let us try to gain a high-level understanding of how a PMBM algorithm for extended object tracking might work. In fact, once we omit the details, many algorithms for extended object tracking are quite similar, and understanding one algorithm on a high level may therefore also help if you later want to understand another one. Our objective is to obtain a tractable approximation to the PMBM posterior at time k, given the posterior at time k-1 and the measurements at time k. As usual, we do this using prediction and update steps, where the equations for the prediction step are the same as for point objects. This means, for instance, that we can predict every Bernoulli component, as well as every component in the Poisson intensity, independently of each other. Also, when predicting the Bernoulli components, we scale their existence probabilities with the probability of survival, and so on. The update step is more interesting, but updating the Poisson point process is actually equally simple as before, and we simply scale the intensity function by the probability that an object is undetected. The only major difference is therefore in the update of the multi Bernoulli mixture. As you know, objects can now be associated to several measurements in a single measurement scan, and we therefore obtain many more hypotheses. Still, on a high level, we can proceed by first identifying a number of global hypotheses with high weights, and then prune all other global hypotheses as well as all local hypotheses that do not appear in the global hypotheses that we have decided to keep. That is, roughly speaking, we still have a mixture with too many terms, and we use pruning to limit the number of terms, just like we did for point objects. Does this mean that we can also use the same machinery as before? No, it doesn't. And this is one reason that extended object tracking is more challenging. Specifically, all the assignment methods that you've learned about, assume that at most one detection can be associated to each object. Unfortunately, this means that they cannot be used to find the most likely global hypotheses, and we therefore need to develop other techniques for this purpose.